got a trap on Oh no. Okay, we're here today with William B.J. Hall, the Republican candidate for the St. Mary's County Commissioner. We're at the outdoor studio of the Chesapeake today at Fissy's Marina, which will open on May 14th at noon. They have some of the world's best crab cakes. So, B.J., you're, you're running. Could have had to eat higher. You're running with one of four people for the Republican nomination for County Commissioner. Yes, sir. All right. Would you please tell the viewers, the readers, a little bit about yourself, your uh, military, professional, educational, and public service background? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I was born in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, after leaving, I need to speak up. <coughs> gotcha. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I, I uh, left Alabama, uh, graduated, to, graduated from West Point, uh, spent two years in the Army um, with uh, air defense, um, ended up getting out um, because of my medical discharge. Um, I spent some time uh, working with manufacturing, working in the Six Sigma, a Six Sigma facilitation ca capacity, and then I moved on to project management. I've been working in project management for the last 15 years. Um, as far as public service goes, um, I've been on several local boards, uh, Economic Development Commission. I'm uh, on the, currently on the Planning Commission. Um, I, I do a lot of volunteering around around the area um, on, on several several other boards, uh, not necessarily um, ones associated with the, the county, but I'm doing a lot of work out here with the community. Okay, you said you're on the Planning Commission. Yes, sir. This past week we've had a public hearing on the rural farms in Lexington Park. Yes, sir. Which, along with the pot factory and ABLE, seem to be two of the hottest issues in the county at the current time. Yes, sir. Uh, did you vote for or against the rural farms application? Um, well, I recently had surgery, so I was unable to make uh, the, the rural farms. And, uh, okay, well, they're going to have more. To, that was just the concept plan. They're going to be back before the panel. How will you vote then? They won't be back before us. Oh, they won't? No. Okay. All right. Well, what do you think should be done with Linda's Cafe? Should the, It's all it goes back to the AQ zone well, restricting the use. I think, okay? I think, I think that uh, the argument has been, has been misrepresented. Um, she's, she's actually... Um, a tenant in a facility and the owner has decided to make a different choice um, as, as far as the use of that facility goes. Um, yeah, but should the county government be doing something to help relocate her or any of the small businesses that can't stay for any reason? I mean, if the county did that all around the county, if the county was responsible for doing that. Well, there's only one AQ zone. Yeah, but do you know how many businesses are in there? Or how many businesses have to relocate in there? It's a lot. I mean, there's, there's several. So I mean, you go. You, you're talking about businesses that run from from gate one almost to gate three, from from the gate all the way back um, to the library. So I mean, everything that falls into that area, if, the, if that small business, um, the owner of that their property decides to relocate or uh, change the use, uh, then we'd be responsible for, for moving all the small businesses in the area. So I I I, I believe that some concerned citizens are reaching out to her to ensure that she does have a good landing spot and, and she does not have a problem <laughs> and she doesn't and she's not uh, penalized financially uh, to, to, uh, to a regular okay. On a different topic, we have the budget process cur currently going on in St. Mary's County. You're running to, to be elected County Commissioner President. Yes, sir. They have in their uh, capital budget a plan for a $26 million new sheriff's palace. Okay. Yes, sir. With $700,000 allocated in the in the next year's budget, but the total will be $26 million. They want a bigger building. Uh, it appears, based on the questions given to two commissioners, that the decision to put this in there. The design was made from staff. They didn't appoint a citizens committee to review it or make a recommendation. It's just the staff saying we want nicer digs to be in. We have crime 
that is supposed to be fought by deputies and solved by deputies, how does that work if you put them in a building? Unless the crime's going on in that building, shouldn't the money be directed into the community? Well, one, I mean, we're, we're talking about two, two different types of funds. Two different types of funds when you're talking about capital improvement and, and fund for the officers. So those, I mean, that's kind of mixing apples and oranges right there. Um, and, and when we talk about uh, capital improvement projects, we don't always have boards to review. Um, that's why we have the public hearings, just so people are aware of what happens um, with, when it comes to those projects. Now, as far as this one specifically, uh, it's my understanding that that there are some resources that 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 the current sheriff department sheriff de department does not have, and and they actually need need, need the uh, those facilities. But I haven't gone into the detail uh, necessary to understand if if some costs can be cut. Um, I think that. When you look at a lot of our capital improvement projects, um, I think that there there is a lot of improvement there that can be gained. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at that if uh, if the if I am lucky enough to be one of the members of the board. In the 19, early 90s, the county established a space needs study composed of citizens and elected officials and a few bureaucrats, yes, department sir. heads. Okay. And that's what determined that we needed a $23 million judicial palace, which the county commissioners eventually turned down and just expanded and added on to the existing courthouse in Leonardtown. Yes, sir. Okay. But there doesn't appear to be any space needs study here. It's just the bureaucrats. So would you expand that and, and make that make a public county citizen review board to do, do that in the future? Or well, just rely on the bureaucrats? <laughs> well, I mean, one of the things that I want to do when, when I when I get here is, is really a, an analysis of, of all of the resources that we have. So I think that there are uh, there's a lot of efficiency to be gained. There's a lot of low hanging fruit uh, when it comes to uh, improvement in, in all facets. We, we start talking about space. When we start talking about uh, utilizing uh, our personnel. I, think, I, I don't think that our government is currently structured in a way that utilizes the resources that we supply them with um, efficiently. So let's let's take a look at the space. And let's let's take a look at the the uh, the org chart. Let's let's take a look at all the services that we provide. And figure out how we can do those things better and actually get more for what we do. So I understand what you mean. You, you, you're asking a very specific question, but I think that you need to look at the the, the government. Um, big picture instead of just focusing on that one. Okay. You are a Republican. Yes, sir. Republicans historically seem to care about keeping taxes low. Yes, sir. Does that describe your philosophy? Absolutely. It's, it's, my, my thing is, is like if, if we're, especially since we're not efficiently using our money right now, it, we, we can definitely get a lot more juice out, out, out of what we have that we that we've been out of what we've been paying. So let's let's figure out how how to find um, the uh, the loose change, if you will, um, and, and 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 utilize those resources a little better. Uh, and then we'll, I believe that we wouldn't have a reason to to raise raise taxes. Okay. People seem to have always had problems with the bureaucrats in Leonardtown. They want to get a permit for anything. <laughs> it's always a pain. Yes, sir. What will you do to make the average citizen and homeowner have an easier time of it in dealing with the county government? Well, is, this goes back to the, my continuous uh, discussion around improvement, improving efficiency. And so we, when we look at all the processes that we have, um, I, I hear about the ease of going to Leonardtown, the town, and, and getting the permit. I wonder if we can get some lessons learned from them or just get some best practices from other places so we can actually help uh, streamline all of the, the permitting because now you can apply for a permit in one place, have to pick something up in another. It's like, I mean, it, it's got to be a better way of doing business. Well, they were throwing a term around here about 15, 20 years ago called fast track. And it looks like the fast track went down on a siding that was a dead end and over a cliff. Yeah, that's, I mean, but that's... It's, that's, that, that's kind of par for the course. We do a lot of things, we have a lot of discussions, we build a lot of plans, but usually a lot of the plans just kind of go by the wayside. So if you look at some of our development plans, you look at our comprehensive plans, they're just plans. We don't execute. 
So we, we we do a lot of talking, but we don't do a lot of doing. So we, we have to be, be in the business of executing. The 800 pound gorilla in the room, yes. besides a pot factory, is the gridlock at Great Mills and the Thomas Johnson Bridge. Now, politicians of both parties have been competing for the title of being the most ineffective at solving either of those gridlocks. What will you do to address the gridlock problem and try to finally get Great Mills opened up? And then, right in Leonardtown, they got a road expansion project of one mile that's still not finished after five years. It only took 18 months to build the Pentagon during World War II. Look what these doofuses are doing here. What will you do to try to solve the traffic problem, make life better for people? One, I don't want to call anyone a doofus, uh, but no, I'm, I, I think that a lot of a lot of the problems that we have um, stem from um, lack of relationships in, in Annapolis. Um, I, over the past eight years, well, seven years, excuse me, I've been I've been building relationships with a lot of people that make decisions in Annapolis, and I think that it's important for us to establish uh, good lines of communication so we can get some of our projects prioritized, meaning that we have to deal with uh, other outside um, outside um, uh, agencies to make roads uh, work on state roads uh, actually happen. So that's that's not a county function, and so we have to rely on those relationships in Annapolis to make it happen. Is it a wind, or am I just a, am I just too soft spoken for you? Both. Okay. All right. I'll take that. Okay. Action. So one one of the things I, I want I want to throw at you, I think um, one of the reasons why I jumped into this race, the energy around around the the political climate down here, I think it needs to be shifted a bit. Uh, we've allowed the the political climate from Washington D.C. impact what's happening down here in um, St. Mary's County. And I always thought that that was weird because nobody in in uh, Washington D.C. really cares about St. Mary's County. So we really need to be focused internally instead of allowing them to control the temperature of our, our political climate down here in St. Mary's County. And so we keep worrying about who's who's in office up 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 the road and not really focused on things that are happening happening here at the local level. I think we really need to be focused on who's who's on the school board. Most people out here don't know who's on the school board. Most people don't even know who their commissioner is. It's like one, they always say, oh, that person doesn't need to be in office. It's like, they're term limited. It's like, it's like a lot of people just don't know. So we really need to have more positive energy, more attention uh, focused on what's happening here at the local level to get more people engaged and, and possibly get better candidates. Not saying that I'm one of those candidates. Well, I am saying I'm one of those candidates. But, I mean, truly, there, there has to be a lot, a, lot more, um, a, a lot more talent here that should be interested in doing great things here in St. Mary's County. Um, man, I, I, can, I, can go, I can go on a, a long ramble. I, I mean, but one of the reasons, the reason, another one of the reasons, sitting on the planning commission, um, we were we were trying to get input on the comprehensive plan. So we have a, about 120,000 people here, right? 120,000 people. We sent out surveys. We put things up on websites. We posted things on Facebook. And we got 247 responses. 120,000 people. So it was funny because when we start reviewing this. We looked around the room and a lot of people were saying, people need to care about the comprehensive plan. It's like, why? We haven't given them a reason to care about the comprehensive plan. A lot of people don't even know what the comprehensive plan is, right? And we were sitting there saying that you need to care more, but it's our responsibility as leaders of the county to ensure that they understand what it is, how important it is, and engage them in a meaningful way. Like 247 doesn't show a reflection, of, it doesn't show a failure of the citizen of the county. It shows a failure in the leadership to really engage people to make sure that they have, we have their input. And so we have all these public hearings and everybody's excited about 49 people coming out to talk. It's like, that, that should be normal. It's like, why is that the max? 
why is it's like you should always we have a hundred and twenty thousand people and we're happy about 49 that's ridiculous it's because we don't truly want the input so we got to make sure that we're really engaging the people that are out here in the community to to make sure that it's, it's a two-way thing as well because when we look at the public hearing it's not a two-way it's not a two-way conversation it's just us complaining to the people who made bad decisions and and we, it's got to be better than that because <laughs> This is our county, our our being the citizens of St. Mary's County. This is we we just choose the people who temporarily get to run it or make the decisions over the budget. I mean because Annapolis really runs us, but that's something else. <laughs> okay, different topic. We have a regional airport. Give it to me. Okay, you're on the planning commission, Absolutely. so you should be in tune to that. And you're running for airport. county commissioner president. Yes, sir. We have an airplane terminal that was put in. Uh, with, at the suggestion of delegate, former delegate John Bohannon, mm -hmm. they put three million bucks in the airplane terminal. They've never had a scheduled flight. Yes, sir. And just to show that waste and and uh, abuse of the taxpayers can take place on a bipartisan basis. After we got the Democrat get the three million dollars spent there, we had a Republican sheriff send his canine officers off to be trained in Toronto to learn how to sniff out bombs on an airplane. And yet the airplane, the airport terminal here has never had a booked passenger, never once in 30 years. Now they're extending the runway. Yes, sir. Okay. So supposedly to get bigger planes to land. Yes, sir. And they call it regional airport, but we still don't have any scheduled airlines. That's true. What would you do to try to achieve getting scheduled flights here that could link people to BWI? Well, I, I think that um, that people are that there are some citizens that are working on that, um, not necessarily in the way that we traditionally see public flying. I mean, but I know I know you mean they're, they're playing golf and poker and everything, no, going to trips to the Bahamas. Yeah. I mean, just, just. I think you should just keep your eye on um, uh, on what, what's happening at the airport. Um, some scheduled flights probably will be coming here in the near future. The um, there are things that will be coming. I think that there are options. They, there are several several groups that are presenting like the, those flights. I think there's electric shuttles that that you can use to to go from here to. to um, uh, to the eastern shore, uh, from here to Baltimore. So I mean, the people are, are, are exploring those different options, but um, the the permitting process to, to make sure that we, we get everything approved through the FAA. Um, I think I think that Chris Castellini is actually looking at those options. So I, I, I believe that those plans are in the works already. So I, w I wouldn't want to get into office and say, oh yeah, we made this happen because I think that they're exploring those options. Well, the original transportation uh, for St. Mary's County was by water. Wouldn't it make sense to explore getting car ferries to the eastern shore from St. Mary's County at Point Lookout? We can, we can explore a lot of things. I mean, we, what, what I have to do more than anything else is see what, what plans exist. Um, it's like we've been asking around, try to try to get a, well, to, to understand what, what's already in play in, in different areas. Um, but I'm not sure how feasible it would be to, to, to actually have um, a water taxi versus the, the, the electric flight. The electric shuttle. So we, we, we have to see which one makes the most sense financially for us um, and, and what's more. more um, Could you describe what an electric shuttle is? Well, it was, I, I don't I don't know the, the technology, but it was, it was under, my understanding is that, that there's a pad that'll be added out there that, that charges electric, electric shuttles. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But, um, but it's something would you, would you trust an aircraft that was powered only by electricity and then the battery runs out? You know what's going to happen, right? It's going to drop like a rock? Absolutely. Well, it's, it, I mean, you, you trust it on gas. I mean, it's, if, you run, if you run out of gas, the same thing can happen. So it's, if you monitor your meters, I don't, I don't think that there's, there's much of a difference. If you understand the range, if you all end up, end up uh, trying, trying to stretch the limit, then that could be problematic. <laughs> okay. Community involvement, it means a lot of different things to different people. Yes, sir. Your community involvement. Hold on, hold on. Don't leave the airport. 
one one of the good things that's happened at the airport that I wanted to make sure that I, that I had an opportunity to talk about. Um, have, I have a youth in aviation program that that um, that we we launched this past year uh, with my nonprofit Reach Back and Lift One. Um, we we partner with the East Coast chapter of the Tuskegee Airmen, um, University of Maryland, um, and and S Hunt Arrow. And, and we, we have a group of kids that are going through ground training right now. And this past weekend, actually yesterday, I'm saying this past weekend, it was yesterday, we actually had uh, one of the kids up in the, in the, air, air, um, in the airplane, did a quick flight, um, and he actually had his hands on the yoke and, the, and he had an opportunity to fly. Um, there are other programs that, that exist that provide these training, but this, this was, was um, free of charge, all the kids had to do was volunteer. I mean, well, to was show up and, and actually have the desire to participate in in a in a 12-week program. So, um, at the end of the the, um, the program, we'll give them the option to to take a class. I mean, we'll take the, to take the FAA test, um, and, and hopefully we can get a couple of people with um, at least the, the ground portion complete complete with their uh, the pilot's license. Hey, on the on the on the community involvement, that's great community involvement. Yes, sir. Other things you've been doing, been working to get the health department located on Great Mills Road. You assisted in the group that did that. Yes, sir. We we had a group um, that came together. Um, PNC reached out to the community uh, to try to see uh, what. Well, to, to notify everybody that they were closing the bank. Uh, so they had a lot of community leaders on a call, and they, they just wanted people to know what uh, what was, uh, what really let, let everybody know the timeline. So <clears throat> a friend of mine, uh, Fernetta Carson, uh, we, we had a conversation after we had the meeting, and, and we reached out to uh, the leaders at PNC uh, to, to start a discussion about possibly um, working out a scenario to have community use of the building. Uh, we brought in um, Dennis Nicholson um, as, a, as a part of the group and, and we started working uh, to, to figure out what could be done with the building. Um, Dennis, Dennis reached out to, um, uh, to the health department and, and Dr. Brewster came on board and she had some wonderful ideas uh, for, for vaccines and, and, and tests and and her phase two, the phase two that the health department actually has incorporates a lot of the ideas that we had from from the original the original plan. So it's focused on community outreach, economic development, crime prevention, um, and, and there's a lot of collaboration that will be happening with, with the sheriff department. So we're excited to see where that building is going. And um, I'm just happy that we had a great team that, that can make that happen. And shout out to, to PNC for, for donating that to the county. Um, and that was, that was, that was an awesome accomplishment. Great.